Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to evaluate an expression by using the half angle formula. So you can see here I have three, three, answer, or three problems up here, uh, three expressions. And, but the most important thing, at least the obvious one, is like sine of 15. Let's just start with that one. Well, you know, typically when we're evaluating trigonometric functions like sine of 30 degrees, uh, we can just go ahead and find 30 degrees. Oh, that's an angle that crosses at, the, at a point on the unit circle. Sine is the y coordinate. Boom, done, 1 half. Good to go, right? Um, but when we have something like 15 degrees, we don't have an angle. We don't have a point where that angle crosses the unit circle that we're familiar with. So typically, um, you know, either we could use sum and difference formulas. Uh, we could use double angle formulas. We could tug it in our calculator to get the approximate answer. Um, but the only other way, if those don't work and we won't still need to get the exact answer, then we're going to want to use our half angle formulas. So basically, the first thing we need to do is know the half angle formula for sine. So the half angle formula for sine is sine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now, I don't have, these, I don't have the, um, the formulas memorized because I'm teaching you throughout the summer here. So I, am kinda, I did write them down. But you're going to want to make sure, especially when you're going through this, that you have them right in front of you so you can look at them. All right. So I have the sine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 2. All right, so what it's saying is the sine of theta divided by 2. That means this angle is being divided by 2. So to find theta, right, what is the difference between theta divided by 2 and, and theta? It's being multiplied by 2, right? Do you see the difference here? This is like um, 5 divided by, or basically what divided by 2 um, if theta is divided by 2, then what would theta be? Well, basically, we can think of this. So we could say sine of 15 degrees. You could see that this is double that, right? So therefore, that's going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine double 15 degrees is 30 degrees divided by 2. So basically, what you can do is think about this as like doubling that value, um, Okay, or doubling the initial value that you're given. So uh, um, OK, so now the next thing we've got to look at is determine what quadrant that my uh, trigonometric function is in. So we've got to be able to determine what the, which tr where is uh, where is the, which quadrant is the trigonometric function in? Well, 15 degrees is in the first quadrant. So Therefore, when we're dealing with the sine of 15 in the first quadrant, sine is positive. So we're not going to have to do the positive or negative. We know our answer is going to be positive. Now we need to evaluate for a cosine of 30 degrees. So if you remember on the unit circle, 30 degrees, um, that's going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So therefore, I have equals. I'm not going to write the plus sign. I'm just going to write minus the square root of 3 divided by 2 over 2. Now we simply need to simplify this. So we have a fraction in our denominator, but not one in our numerator. So the best way to get rid of your fraction um, in that numerator is to multiply by a multiplier. We're going to multiply that multiplier in the same in the numerator and the denominator. I'm not going to write over 1 here because they're both 2's. But since I'm multiplying a whole number of times a fraction, I'm going to rewrite that as a fraction. So by doing that, you can see that my 2's in the numerator here now divide out. So I'm left with uh, the square root of 1 minus the square root of 3 divided by 4. Well, when you're taking the square root of a fraction, you can basically take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. I can't simplify the square root of the numerator. That's going to be 1 minus the square root of 3. But I can simplify the square root of the denominator, which will be 2. So my final answer would be 1 minus the square root of 3 divided by 2. And again, that's positive because my angle is positive for sine. My angle is in the first quadrant, and sine is positive in the first quadrant. Um, OK, so now let's go ahead and look at this one. So again, if you kind of get to the rhythm, the main important thing is whenever we're doing the half angle formula, we've got to know the formula. So for cosine of the half angle, 1 plus cosine, OK? So it's going to be cosine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. OK, so um, again, now what we need to do is determine, well, all right, what is double of 157.5? Double 157.5 is going to be 3, 315. 
So again, basically from going, you're basically going from here, which is 157.5, and you're doubling it to give you theta. Because think of it this way. This is, this is what I was thinking. If you want to figure out what theta is, how do you get to that? You multiply by 2, right? So if you multiply by 2, that gives you theta. So if I take this, double it, that's going to give me theta. And 157.5 doubled is going to be uh, 315. Duh. OK. So therefore, I now have, um, oh, and the second thing I also need to look at is see where this angle's at. Now, the angle, 157, 180 is halfway around the circle, right? 90 is between that. So 157 is in the second quadrant. Cosine is negative in the second quadrant. So when I write my angle, I'm now going to use the negative of the square root. And it's going to be 1 plus cosine of 315 degrees divided by 2. Now we need to figure out, well, what the heck is cosine of 315 degrees, right? So cosine of 315 degrees, well, that's going to be 45 degrees south of um, 360 degrees. So it's basically there. So the cosine of that is going to be the square root of 2 over 2. So it equals negative 1 plus the square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2. Now, kind of doing just like what we did over here, to get rid of that fraction, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. Or multiply 2 on the numerator and 2 in the denominator. By doing that, what I have now obtained is 1 plus square root of 2 as the 2's divide out, divided by 4. Then remember, you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. So my final answer is negative square root of 1 plus the square root of 2 all over 2. Fair enough. All right, so last one. Let's go ahead and get into the tangent. Um, so tangent's going to have a little bit different formula here. Tangent of pi divided by 2 is going to equal plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. Again, remembering tangent of 3 pi over 2, represent, 3 pi over 2 represents pi halves. So to get to theta, you've got to multiply by 2. Or actually, you know what? Here's a good idea. 3 over 2 equals, this is like one of my biggest questions. I am telling you that pi over 2 is equal to 3 pi over 8. Those are like the exact same. So we want to figure out what theta is. So I'm going to multiply by 2. So therefore, theta equals, well, 2 times 3 is 6 pi over 8. I can reduce that, divide by 2 in the top and the bottom, and I get 3 fourths. 3 pi over 4. OK? Right? Yes. So equals 3 pi over 4. So therefore, now I'm just going to type in, oh, and the last thing is tangent 3 pi over 8. Um, well, 4 pi over 8 would be pi halves, right? That's the, that's the y axis. So 3 pi over 8 is still going to be in the first quadrant. Tangent is positive. So we're only going to deal with the positive version of this. So I have 1 minus, um, what did I say? 3 pi over 4. cosine of 3 pi over 4 divided by 1 plus cosine of 3 pi over 4. OK, so cosine of 3 pi over 4 is going to be in the second quadrant. Um, that's going to be a negative square root of 2 over 2. Again, I'm using my unit circle. If you're not following me, take out the unit circle and take a look at it. So we have 1 minus a negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1 plus a negative square root of 2 over 2. Now, I put these in parentheses just to make sure that another common mistake that students will make is with their positive and their negatives. They'll get those all mixed up. So um, make sure when you are make sure when you're working with them that you just use them in parentheses. So now you can see that this is actually being rewritten as um, the square root of Actually, let's, so we can rewrite this as now a plus, and that is a minus. I want to save a little space. OK. So then, again, to get rid of your denominators, um, basically the same important thing that we need to do is multiply by 2 over 2. 
So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2 on the top and the bottom. Ooh. And this is all inside. Yes, the inside. OK. So by doing that, I now obtain 2 plus the square root of 2 divided by 2 minus the square root of 2. Whew. OK. Um, then to get rid of that, I, I don't want to divide by a uh, fraction. So let's go and try to see if we can simplify this a little bit further. So when doing that, I now obtain, let's see, 4 plus 2 square root of 2 plus 2 divided by, this becomes a difference of two squares, which would be 4. Oh, that's 2 times square root of 2. 2 times square root of 2, that's 4 square root of 2. 4, and then that's a negative 2. Square root of, negative square root of 2 times square root of 2 is going to be 2. So now let's go and combine them. That becomes 4 plus 4 is going to be a 6 plus 4 square root of 2 divided by 2. Now, we can't really simplify that um, any further. I mean, I could factor out a 2. I could divide the 2 into both of those. So therefore, my final answer would be a square root of 3 plus 2 square root of 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you um, uh, evaluate for the exact value of a trigonometric function using your half angle formula. Thanks.